Now we will discuss the concepts of capital assets pricing model and also the security market line. Before that, I would like to recap the concepts we learned in the capital market line. So the green line is the capital market line, and here it shows the trade-off between the expected return and the risk. So a capital market line contains portfolio which is formed by the risk-free assets and also a market portfolio in different proportion. As we increase the proportion in the market portfolio, the risk will increase. But the expected return will also increase. So we say that we are rewarded for bearing higher risk. The main point here is that this risk is the systematic risk. This one tells us that we are only rewarded for bearing additional systematic risk, but not the non-systematic risk. Let's say you take a position here. It means that you are bearing this amount of risk and you will expect to have a return at this level. If you want to leverage your investment, what you can do is to borrow money at a risk-free rate and invest more in the market portfolio. And as a result, you are bearing more risk, but at the same time, you will be rewarded with higher expected return. Now, assume there is another equity. For you, when you borrow this money, you can invest in the market portfolio, but you also can invest in another asset. And under what condition would you invest in other assets in instead of investing in the additional market portfolio? Of course, you will require that the additional expected return over the additional risk you are bearing by investing in the new assets will be at least the same as by moving from this point to this point on the capital markets line. So based on this requirement, you can derive the security market line and also the capital asset pricing model. You can find this in many websites, so I'm not going to dig into the detail. But here I would like to show you how to conceptually derive the security market line and also the capital asset pricing model. The most important thing of this derivation again is that you are only rewarded for bearing additional systematic risk instead of the long systematic risk. So again here, remember this line represents the systematic risk. But in the equity, we are trying to evaluate it contains both the systematic and non-systematic risk. So what can we do? What we can do is to decompose the total risk of the equity into non-systematic and systematic risk. So here I try to put the vertical axis as non-systematic risk and horizontal one as the systematic risk. For a market portfolio, we know that it is always going to be a systematic risk. So maybe this is the market portfolio. But for any equity, it will be somewhere between the long systematic and the systematic. So it will be something like this. And this is the total risk of the equity. So in order to find out the systematic components of this equity, we have to project this line onto the systematic axis. The way to do this is just by drawing a perpendicular line to the systematic axis, and this one will become the systematic risk component of the equity. So what is this value? Mathematically, this value is just equal to co correlation between the equity and the market times the total standard deviation of the equity, which is the sigma of the equity's systematic risk. Now, once we find out the systematic components of this equity, we can just use the capital market line equation directly to derive the security market line. The reason is because as long as we are using the systematic risk, we can fit into the green line. So let's go back to the equation we have learned. Now let's look into the capital market line equation again. So here shows the expected return of the total portfolio in relationship to the risk of the market portfolio. So to make it clearer, this risky I will change it to market because the risky asset we were talking about was just the market portfolio.
So now we are evaluating the value of the equity. But we have to change this sigma total to be the systematic risk of the new equity portfolio. And this one is related to the systematic risk of the new equity. And we just show that the systematic risk of the equity is just equals to the correlation of this equity with the market's portfolio times the total risk of this equity. So therefore, we can just plug this one directly into the sigma total for the security market line. So as a result, we still have this part the same. And then sigma total will become the correlation times the sigma total equity and then times this part. I will multiply the numerator by sigma market like this. And then at the same time, I will do the same thing for the denominator. So this one becomes square. So what is this term? The correlation between the equity and the market times the standard deviation of the equity times the standard deviation of the market. This one is just equal to the covariance of the market and the equity. Now we know that the covariance is constant and the market's variance is also constant. By combining these two terms, I call it beta. Then I arrive this important equation, which is the security market line. So here plots the security market line. A security market line is also a straight line, and it is very similar to the capital market line. And this is because it is actually just uh, derived from the capital market line. And again, the intercept is the expected return of the risk-free assets. So what is the difference between the security market line and the capital market line? The major difference is the x axis. In the capital market line, this axis is just the sigma of the market. While in the security market line, this is the beta. And the beta is just the covariance between the market and the equity. So this line tells us that if you have an equity with the beta equal to a particular value, then the expected return will be this one. This one will be an appropriate evaluation for the expected return of any stock by the given beta. If there is a stock above the security market line, then you know that this is undervalued. The reason is because theoretically, the expected return is only worth this amount. But now, if you buy the stock, you are expecting it to have much higher expected return because it is undervalued. If there is a stock below the security market line, then it means that this stock is overpriced. The reason is because given this amount of beta, you should at least have this amount of expected return. But now the real expected return is just this. Then it means that the stock is overpriced then you should not buy the stock, but sell it. So finally, I also want to mention that this equation is the so-called capital asset pricing model.